Hi everyone, my name's Hannah and I'm going to be taking you through this study skill session. Before starting, make sure that you've got a pen and paper or a Word document open on your device as there'll be opportunities for you to practice what you learn. This study skill session is going to look at references, going to look at what they are and why they're useful. References are important for every subject, so the session will be useful for everyone. There will be a STEM focus on the examples. The session is aimed for 13 to 16 year olds, but may be useful for older students too, because the skill of understanding references is very important at university, and even university students struggle to understand them and use them well. There are three aims of this session. The first one is to know what a reference is. The second is to be able to explain the importance of references. And finally, to identify different elements of a reference. So let's start with what a reference is. A reference is a description of a source. So a source might be an article that you're reading or a paper, a text, a book or a poster whose ideas you used in your own writing. It is part of the process in academic writing to use a reference. In general, we can see three steps in producing academic writing. Step one is when you're conducting your research, so you're doing research, might be Googling something and reading articles and papers to collect lots of ideas to know what you want to write. Step two will be writing. So might be writing your essay or an article, a paper, might be writing a paragraph at the beginning. And step three is when you reference your writing. So this is when you're writing down the articles and papers that you read to acknowledge where the ideas that you have written about come from. Let's have a look at an example of how we can use these steps and use a reference. You might have an assignment to write about how stars are formed. To help with this assignment, you conduct research. So you might Google how a star is formed, and this is kind of the research part of your assignment. If you click on the second result that comes up on Google, how do stars form the frontiers of young minds, you'll read the article on that web page. Here's a small extract and the abstract of that article. And you might learn some really useful information here, such as stars form from an accumulation of gas and dust, which collapses due to gravity and starts to form stars. Once you've done your research, you'll move on to step two, which is the writing of your essay. And when writing your assignment, you're going to put into your own words what you've read. So I've put an example here just of one sentence. The buildup of gas and dust causes the formation of stars. In the third step of your academic writing, you'll reference the website where you found that information. So here's the website where you found it, and here is your reference. Christensen was the author of the article you read, which was called How Do Stars Form? We'll come back to all the other information here to understand it later. So we've now had a look at what a reference is. Can you explain in your own words what a reference is? Pause the video here and take a minute to write down your explanation of a reference. We're now going to look at how to explain the importance of references. You may read an article or a text about what you're studying. For example, in biology when studying habitats, you could come across this article, How Does Rock Climbing Impact Birds? Just because something is written down it doesn't mean that it is reliable information. To check the reliability of a source, so a source again is kind of an article or a text, so to check the reliability of a source we can find out where the author has found information that they've written about. Here is the whole article about how rock climbing impacts birds. At the very end of the article there is a section called references that I've circled. Since it is not in the main part of the text, it's quite easy to dismiss it and ignore it, but it is actually really important to look at. 
This is because the references help us assess if the article is reliable. If the references are from sources that we trust, then the article is likely to be reliable and it's likely that we can take and use the ideas from the article. So to sum up, references are important because they help us assess whether a source is reliable. Before focusing on those references that we just saw, let's pause here and reflect why references are important. Pause the video for a minute to write down in your own words why references are important. Try and include the words sources and reliable. This is what the reference list for the article on rock climbing and birds looks like. We can see that there are three references here. So we know that the author used information from three different sources to write this article. Let's now look even more closely to understand what it all means. The first reference starts from the word Covey and ends with this 0209557. The first part highlighted in yellow were referring to the names of the authors who wrote the article. They often, but not always, have their surname, then the initial of their first name. So here we've got Covey N, Benedict L, and Keeley WH. So there were three authors of this article in the reference list. The year that you've got in brackets here refers to the year the article was published. Next, we've got the name of the article. Rock climbing activity and physical habitat attributes impact avian community diversity and cliff environments. Now we've got the name of the journal. To understand what a journal is, Imagine a book with short stories in it. The journal is the book and each short story is an essay that's been written by an academic. An academic is someone who is studying or carrying out research as their profession. And the essay can also be called a paper or an article. Next, we've got the volume number. I'll come back and explain what this means in a moment. And then the issue number. Again, I'll come back to this. In blue, we've got the link for where you can find the article online. So, what do we know so far? The authors of the article on rock climbers and birds read an article that was written by Covey, Benedict and Keeley. We know the article was published in 2019 we know the title of it, we know that it was published in the journal PLOS1, and now we'll have a look at what the volume and issue number mean. Let's go back to the book with short stories, the book that we looked at when understanding what a journal is. Imagine the book publishers publish a new book with the same name the following year with different stories. This book will be the second volume of the short story book. If they publish another book, again with the same name the following year, this will be the third volume. Have a look at the volumes of books in the picture here. Look at the book on the far left. This is the very first book that's been published. The one next to it is the second volume. So this is a book by the same publishers that has been published the next year. The book next to that one is the third volume. That third volume has been published the following year. After that, so now we're looking at the fourth one to the left, that is the fourth volume of the book, which has been published in the fourth year. Next, the fifth year that the books are being published is the fifth volume, and so forth. So the volume refers to the number of years that the book has been published for. If our short story book was first published in 2010, 
that is still being published now with different short stories, the book would be in its 10th volume this year. Now, similar to the short story book, if a journal was first published in 2010, the journal would be in its 10th volume this year. Let's now have a look at what the issue number is. We were thinking about a short story book that publishes a new volume each year. Imagine that the book was first published in 2010. In 2011, the book will be in the second volume. But let's say that each month, as well as each year, it publishes another edition of the book with new short stories by different authors. The issue number refers to the number of times in a year the book is published. So, if a book publishes a new edition every month, the July edition would be the seventh issue of the book, July being the seventh month in the year. If you have a look at these images here, the first one that we saw refers, these numbers refer to the number of years the book has been published. These were the volumes of the book. Now we can see within each volume, we've got even more. These books represent the number of times in a year the book has been published. Let's have a quick look to piece together all this information to understand the reference again. By looking at this reference, we know that the authors of the article on rock climbers and birds read an article called Rock Climbing Activity and Physical Habitat and so forth that was written by Covey, Benedict and Keeley in 2019 that was published in the first edition of the 14th volume of the journal PLOS1. And we know we can find that article at the link below in blue. Going back to our reference list, the other references here are much simpler to understand. The second one, we've just got the name of the article and underneath it is the link to where you can find it. The reason why it doesn't have all this information that's on top is because it's not been in a journal. It might just be a blog or something written directly on a website. So this is the website where the article is. That probably has been quite a lot to take in. So see how much you understood and have a go yourself at identifying all the parts of a reference list from a different article about bacteria in the gut controlling the brain. Here is the reference list for that article on bacteria in the gut. Can you identify the different parts of the references here? Pause the video here to spend a few minutes writing down what all the different parts of the references mean. Thank you for listening to the study skills session and I hope it's been useful in helping you to understand references a bit better.